Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Niz. I mentioned a while back that if I found a recording software for me to record games that I'd make videos talking about the personalities of characters. And I've finally come across something to do that. And so for my first video, I wanted to do something I'm very familiar with, something that will be easy to do. So through the process of elimination, I decided to pick my favorite game of all time, which also happens to be a horror game. So today, I'm going to be talking about Lone Survivor. And as for the character analysis, I'll be talking about, well, the Lone Survivor. When we first meet Lone Survivor, we find him in a world filled with disfigured mutants that are turned inside out from an unknown disease. In the beginning, he says that his name is non poor anymore, and that he's been in this world for a long time, so long that he's forgotten how long it's been. I used to think they forgot his name too, but that was disproven near the end of the game. I'll tell you right now, you never actually do figure out what his name is. Maybe he's a Sunderland. Now, if we want to gain full understanding of the Lone Survivor, we're going to have to understand the other parts of his psyche. There's the man who wears the box, the old man, and the tall white-faced man. And I would say that they've drawn the short straws in the name department, but at least they got names. For the sake of convenience, I'm going to call the man who wears the box, box man, and the tall white-faced man, tall man. Them having descriptive physical traits as their names is most likely due to the fact that they have no real appearance outside of the Lone Survivor's mind. Since you only encounter one of these characters once outside of Pill Dreams, and the other three times max outside of pill dreams, I feel like I should go over the pill system so that you have context. In Lone Survivor, there are three pills. The green pill, the blue pill, and the red pill. All are just as easily accessible, but the green pill is the only one that you're given immediately. This is most likely because that's the pill that you should use the most often. If the green pill is taken once a day, it increases your sanity but makes you tired, so it's often used just before going to bed. Green pills also trigger a dream sequence where you talk to the box man. The blue pill makes you tired as well and decreases your sanity. But, in return, you meet the old man instead of the box man, which has its own benefits, which I'll explain later. The red pills are by far the most useless, since they decrease your sanity but let you stay up longer. They have no dream sequences and they're pretty much useless once you get coffee. Since coffee increases your sanity as long as you take one a day, and keeps you awake. There are a few more issues on the matter, but that's not the topic of the video today. Now that you understand the pills, let's talk about Boxman. As mentioned before, Boxman appears in your dreams when you take the green pill. The first time you actually meet him is in the blue world, but he doesn't bother talking in the blue world. But he's much more willing to talk in his domain. If you're lacking food or batteries in the real world, Boxman will offer you them in your dreams and they'll appear to you in your pockets. He'll often have conversations with you, although he's rather cryptic. If you happen to answer his questions right, that also boosts your sanity. At one point, he'll ask you if you figured out why he decides to wear a box over his head. If you ask because he's hiding, then he'll respond with it's not as stupid as it sounds. What Boxhead's trying to get across here is that he's the part of Lone Survivor that is hiding. The part of him that's hiding from the grim reality. He helps the Lone Survivor live a healthy life, but he doesn't have him leave his comfort zone. He doesn't challenge him. He insists to help you live a healthy life, but he doesn't insist on helping you leave this place, to go face reality. That reality being that there is no disaster, that this was all fabricated in his mind after she died. He does tell you to read your diary entries and to try to remember, but that's about it. Boxman realizes that he's probably going to figure out eventually, but he should do it at his own pace. The old man represents that lone survivor is withering with age. The lone survivor's been in this world for a pretty long time and he's dying away and the old man's the part of him that knows that. At this rate, he'll waste away in a hospital bed. And that's exactly what the old man wants. You first meet the old man in the blue world, when you find the flashlight after meeting her. You see the old man laughing at you with a bullet wound in his chest. This is identical to the blue ending, where you die and end up with her in the afterlife. Although a bit of this is interpretation on my end, what's important is that he expects you to fail. He expects you to fail and wind up in that ending. Like the Boxman, he wants you to remember, but he's far more forceful. He's more direct, antagonistic, and uh, a man of action. He's part of Lone Survivor's impulsive behavior. While the game will often encourage you to be patient and careful, when you encounter the old man dreams, they'll often use more permanent solutions. If you encounter him in a dream lacking bullets, he'll give you ammo, and only ammo. Now, he's not telling you that violence is the only solution, that you have to shoot every monster, but... A man's gotta protect himself, right? If you're doing the game right, you only actually have to kill two or three monsters. And the ones that you can't sneak past are in town, but by then you have Distress Flares. But you gotta walk all the way to the director to go trade for Distress Flares. And sneaking can take forever and it's pretty easy to fail later on. Why trade your bullets for a band-aid solution? The old man encourages you to use violence as a solution. He wants you to start taking the mentality of using the easy, quick way out. Why give Hank these limited, hard-to-get healing tonics when you just give him blue pills? They don't help him like the healing tonics, but you're getting the same reward for less effort. 
He asks you follow this mentality in body so that you also follow it in mind. Why wake up? Why move on? Why continuing without her? It's just harder. It feels less rewarding too. Just lie down, give up, and be with her. The old man might come across as bitter, but he's not malicious. He's just very tired of this, and he knows you are. But you two aren't the only ones. The tall man's very neutral on the subject, although he makes it clear near the end that he was intending for the lone survivor to move on and survive. He says that you'll meet him three times, and the third time is when you do exactly that. The tall man doesn't care about your mental health or how well you're eating. The tall man cares about your survival altogether. He most likely finds what's going on irrelevant because it's not in the real world. It's just your mind thinking that the world's fallen apart because yours has. The tall man represents you in the hospital bed. He looks older than you but younger than the old man. He looks malnourished and pale. He knows that one way or another your time in this world is coming to an end. In this world, the lone survivor is a bit of all these characters. Not that far from Boxman, he's trying to hide with a surgical mask. You can tell he's at his breaking point like the tall man. And you can tell how weathered he is, like the old man. And since they're all a part of you, it only makes sense that they're all working in your best interest. The Boxman wants to help you practice living a healthy life and moving on at your own pace, like she asked you to. The old man thinks that you should confront what happens to her now, and then end your life. Take the easy way out. It's not what she wanted, but at least now you know you'll be happy. The tall man's more about your survival instincts. He knows that you can get through this. He knows you're strong. They all have one thing in common. They all know that it's only a matter of time before you have to face the truth. In full analysis, the lone survivor himself seems to be mostly an average Joe. Not a whole lot standing out, he's a bit of a bookworm, a self-proclaimed coffee drinker. But apparently he's a fruit connoisseur. Buddha's Hand. I had to look up that one, I thought Jasper was messing with me. And I do believe he's a fan of Ace Attorney. Blacker than the moonless night, hotter and more bitter than hell itself. That is coffee. I was gonna pass it off as coincidence, but I'm a huge Goto fan, so I know that's one of his quotes. Who, mind you, was a character in Ace Attorney who woke up from a coma, realized that the one they loved died, and tried to escape it all through a mask and a new life. I like to think that this is less of a coincidence and more of his unconscious mind playing games with him. And other than that, he seems like cats. He has a sleepy cat plush, some sleepy cat comics, and he lures a stray cat into his home to take care of. Getting the stray home requires a lot of careful movements and getting around a lot, which shows that the lone survivor is very patient. He only really seems to lose his patience when he's confused. You can tell he's a well-meaning man who's doing his best to move on. The theme of his character development is acceptance, because subtracting the joke ending from the game, there's only really two endings. On the surface, it's to answer a question of whether he survived or not, but it's more than that. Did he learn patience? Did he learn charity? Is he taking care of himself like he promised? Either way, she'll understand.